Hey, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, JHSJ, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this is the video I didn't really ever want to make, um, but I guess I kind of knew I would eventually have to. Um, all right, so there are, and most of you know, most of you probably also follow other channels who have been speaking a lot about Rings of Power. Well, there is one channel, and admittedly, I'm not a subscriber of this person, but I have seen their videos before, um, and they tend to be focused a lot on Tolkien stuff. Um, and for the most part, I tend to like their videos and agree with them. Um, not always, but for the most part. Anyway, um, while I was away on Thanksgiving celebrating Thanksgiving with the family, I, a video came across my, my feed on YouTube. And um, it, was, it was interesting be, because this person, and again, I'm not going to call them out. I don't feel it's my place to call anybody out, okay? Um, but, but this person made, made some arguments for why, even if you don't like the Rings of Power, why you should want the show to succeed. Okay, and they they used a, an an, ar, uh, an article that they had pulled up from back in September from uh, Movie Web, as, as sort of like you know a, an article that sort of makes the the points that they were trying to make. Um, and I have it here. Here's the article. Um, so I'll just so I, I'm not going to go into the whole thing because they didn't go into the whole thing. And again, I'm all about like wanting to like you know. Uh, conversations about this stuff we as Tolkien fans as people who are sci-fi fantasy genre fans you know we ha we can discuss this stuff amongst ourselves like I said my only caveats for that is as long as you keep the construct the, the conversation um constructive criticism and as long as you keep it respectful you know I'm like hey listen we don't have to agree we don't have to see things the same way but as long as we can keep it respectful and and constructive then d there's always a positive to get out of any conversation and so that that's sort of what what's going on here I saw this person's video I didn't agree with a lot of the arguments that we're making so this is sort of my video response to their arguments um and it should no in no way be interpreted as an attack on this individual personally i don't know them i would never attack somebody simply because we we see things in a different light uh, to me that's stupid you know they're entitled to their opinion you know and their opinion is just as valid as anybody else's opinions i have a different opinion and i will make the case for my opinions um so this should not be seen as an attack i don't want anybody to go running to another channel and be like oh yeah cutter called you out uh no cutter is not calling anybody out. Cutter is saying, hey, I saw your video. You made these arguments. Here's my counter to those arguments. Who knows? Maybe it might even, we might even work together at some point. Maybe he, he would invite me on and we do like a live thing where we discuss it. You know, there's nothing wrong with discussing stuff. You know, like I said, we don't all have to agree. But anyway, I just wanted to do this video. Um, this is my response to some of the arguments that were made. So this person made some arguments and I sort of jotted down some notes here a little bit. Um, one of their, their, their key things was that it would increase interest in Tolkien um, and increase sales of Tolkien books, the, the Rings of Power show. And because of that, that we should view it as, as sort of a good thing, as a positive thing, that it would increase um, people going out and buying Tolkien books and, and so on and so forth and increase the interest in Tolkien. Um, my problem with that argument is that it sort of stops at the corporate level. And what I mean by that is... Yes, on the face of it, a show like The Rings of Power will, in fact, drive people to to purchase the books or to take an interest in the books at the, at the very least, right? Um, and from Amazon's point of view or the book publisher's point of view, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the win right there, okay? Somebody else bought a 1995 copy of Lord of the Rings. That's another 20 bucks in the, in the company's pocket. OK, as a Tolkien fan, though, that's not where the story stops, because the reality is, is that, yes, a show like Rings of Power will increase interest in Tolkien and his work. However, while book sales may initially go up, that does not mean that. Um, I'm trying to find the best word for it, that uh, appreciation for Tolkien's work would follow suit. It doesn't mean that more people will come to like Tolkien, okay? Actually, it may have a detrimental overall effect. And what I mean by that is you have somebody who watches the Rings of Power show 
And they're like, this is awesome. It's high fantasy. I've heard of this Tolkien guy before. It's it's high fantasy. He's got this strong, independent woman Galadriel character who's who's you know independent and she's strong and she's a leader and she's got agency and stuff and so I I want to check out some of his books and and learn more because you know this is awesome it's like fantasy and the strong you know woman with agency right and then they go and they buy the books and they're like oh I bought the Lord of the Rings books and that's where Amazon and the publishers that's that's where they're out they're like listen we got our money we're out what happens though to the the Tolkien legacy and the Tolkien fandom is this person then reads the book and realizes that the show and the book are completely different, diametrically opposed in a lot of ways, okay? There are no strong, independent women with agency on the level that the Rings of Power show depicts, okay? There are, there are strong, independent women within Tolkien's works, but not on the level that the show depicts, Okay, so what will likely happen is a lot of these people that go out and buy the books will get 10, 20 pages or a couple of chapters into them and realize this is nothing like the show. I liked the show. I'm, I'm not into this crap. You know, who's this Tom Bombadil and his girlfriend? Why the hell are they singing every other thing? They, they can't even say a sentence without singing it, you know, and they're going to put it down and then that's going to be the end of their Tolkien interaction. Okay, because their expectations were based on the show. So this person's argument that, you know, the show would drive book sales is true insofar as from the corporate perspective, that's all you want. You want book sales to be to be driven. Okay, and that will happen. Okay, as a fan of Tolkien, though, and wanting more people to 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 get into Tolkien and all the nuances and the multiple layers of things that he puts into his work, it's not going to help because these people are, they're going to be given a false picture of what Tolkien's about based on the show that will not translate into their interactions with the books. So while Amazon makes their 20 bucks for the book, the Tolkien legacy and the Tolkien fandom does not benefit because we've lost people who thought Tolkien was the way the show depicts him and it's not. So that, that, was, that was one of the arguments that this person made. And, and, and like I said, I'm not saying that they're wrong insofar as it would drive book sales, okay, and drive an interest in Tolkien. But what I'm saying is because it is so inherently different from Tolkien's work, okay, the show, that even though it drives that interest and it drives book sales, it won't retain fans of Tolkien's work. If anything, it will have people take an interest in Tolkien's work, see that it's nothing like the show, and then they'll back away from it. And I can I can actually prove it. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to... Right here... Um, yep, you're already seeing articles that have come out. Okay, this is an article from just a couple of days ago. Where ways that the trilogy has aged badly. Now, they say the trilogy, bec- and, and they show the picture of the poster from... from Peter Jackson's films, but they mainly talk about the novels. They talk about Tolkien's writing his, his itself. They're not just focusing on the films. And, and they even say here, there were many interesting criticisms that arose throughout the Rings of Power series, especially from fans of Tolkien's original works, who argued that the Amazon show didn't accurately represent Tolkien's writing, lore, or characters. But many other fans who enjoyed the modern rendition of Middle-earth argued that it actually highlighted some of the shortcomings of Tolkien's books, some of the more problematic elements that have aged poorly but in their written both in their written form and in the peter jackson movie adaptations so that's what you're what what the rings of power will drive it will drive new fans to tolkien saying wait a minute all of this is wrong it should be changed okay because their point of reference is the rings of power and i don't think this person when they made their video um i don't think they were factoring that in Okay, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But to me, it seemed like they weren't factoring that. They were just talking like, well, it'll just drive interest in Tolkien. It'll drive book sales. And I'm like, that's great for Amazon. Does nothing for Tolkien's legacy. But anyway, that's my argument on that. Um, So let's see. Their other argument that they made was that um, if we want more Tolkien content, 
we would help the show succeed. And I think they actually quoted the, the paragraph that you're looking at on screen, so let's read it. And it says, Although everyone is certainly entitled to their opinion, those who believe that the Rings of Power is ruining the Lord of the Rings seem to be entirely ignoring several key factors. One of the biggest is that they are even being given new content that is set in the very world and franchise that they love at all. Considering how much material exists in Tolkien's Legendarium, there are so many stories that have yet to be adapted in any form, much less in a way that general audiences will see. One would think that if Tolkien fans want to continue to see the author's stories get the on-screen adaptations they deserve, then they would want to support the Rings of Power and make it into a smash hit. Now, that's not saying that everybody has to love the show. It's certainly not the best series on television right now. But if fans have any hope of seeing the likes of the Children of Horan or the Fall of Gondolin told as a film or series, they need to approach the Rings of Power with an open mind at the very least. This is exactly the type of show so many Tolkien fans have been wanting for years, and it's not worth abandoning the idea simply because there are a few changes from the source material. All right, and so this person in their video, they made the argument that this was in fact correct, that, um, you know, we... we as Tolkien fans, you know, we, we always want, we wanted to see Tolkien stuff adapted to either like, you know, a, a streaming platform series or a movie and stuff like that. And so if the Rings of Power fails or if we want to see more Tolkien stuff, we need to to be wanting the Rings of Power to succeed. And that, that was the crux of this person's argument. And again, I, I, I would argue that that's not in inherently true. Um, again, I'm not saying that I'm some Hollywood insider, but I do have some experience with how how with the movie making industry, um, as well as doing visual effects. I co-produced a couple of uh, of films, one of which was in the Tribeca Film Festival back in 2007. I, I, I'm no expert on the industry, but I do have a basic understanding of how it works, and there is no guarantee whether Rings of Power is successful or not that you would get any more Tolkien adaptations, okay? I mean, let's look at it realistically. Prior to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, what were the adaptations we had of Tolkien's work? You have to go back to the late 70s, early 80s with the animated Bakshi, you know, animated versions, right? Um, Return of the King, Lord of the Rings, and so on and so forth, right? From the late 70s, early 80s. So it took that long late 70s, early 80s, to get to Peter Jackson's original trilogy. Um, and that, by and large, had nothing to do with how successful the animated series of the late 70s, early 80s was. Technically, they were not financially lucrative, the animated versions of Lord of the Rings from the 70s, okay? They, didn't, they weren't hits. They were technically box office flops, okay? They did not bring in the big money, as it were. Okay. And yet still 20 years later, we got Peter Jackson's um, Lord of the Rings trilogy. And that is because Hollywood tends to operate in cycles. And you'll see this often, oftentimes um, with, with sort of genres of movies. For instance, going back, we can look at, you know, the whole teen, young, you know, angsty vampire thing was a big thing right you had the twilight films come out and it was all they like they were the biggest thing on the planet the twilight films and then you saw all these sort of spin-offs of the whole twilight thing where you saw like um like the vampire diaries and supernatural and all those sort of shows pop up it because that was the flavor that hollywood was operating off of was that this was the big thing this whole sort of you know young young adult vampire film okay now granted that wasn't the first time that had come around you can go back into the 1980s and then movies like the lost boys and stuff which dealt exactly the same thing that young young adult vampire sort of storyline okay but you know it, it, you had that with twilight you sort of were in that cycle where all these shows and movies were of a similar vein okay then you had the same thing happen later on when you had um with the mcu and and the dceu um where it was superheroes superheroes were the big thing right from from like the 2000 like 2008 ish 2009 ish all the way through you know with infinity wars and endgame and you had iron man films and the thor films and the captain america films and you know and and, and all this stuff and you had the superman and superman versus batman and, and that was the flavor okay was the superhero film 
Okay, that that was the big flavor. Okay, and and we're still sort of on the tail end of that. You're still seeing the the tail end of that now. And and what I'm trying to illustrate here is that Hollywood operates in cycles. Like something will come along, a, a film will come along that will buck the current trend. Okay, and then immediately you will see all these projects that are green light, green lit that are similar to that. Okay, you'll see it in sci-fi and fantasy as well. Okay, um, but it's not directly reti- tied to how well or how poorly a show does. Okay, um, the reason why we have the Rings of Power is the same reason why we have House of the Dragon. Okay, and the same reason why we've had other adaptations recently. Um, what is it, World of Tomorrow or something like that? Or, or I, I forget. I, I don't follow the other one, but it's the same reason why we have those adaptations right now, and that is because of the popularity of Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones showed that you could have a fantasy genre series do well, and so they piled on, okay? Rings of Power has nothing to do with how successful or not The Hobbit was. It has nothing to do with how successful or not Peter Jackson films were. It has to do everything with how successful Game of Thrones was and the cultural phenomenon that came out of that. And that's what Hollywood will look for. Hollywood will look for something that is, you know, water cooler conversation worthy. And that's what they'll play off of. So to make the argument that if we Tolkien fans want more Tolkien stuff, we need the rings of power specifically to to succeed, even if we hate the show. Okay, and I will give credit to this person who made this video. They did say you don't have to like the show, but you should still want it to succeed. The, the argument, though, that we need this show to succeed or want this show to succeed if we are ever to get additional Tolkien content adapted to the screen is, is patently false. Because once this sci-fi fantasy genre cycle moves on, it doesn't matter how good Rings of Power has done. It will ha- the, the cycle will have moved on, and that's what Hollywood will be focusing on, okay? Um, whether it be cop dramas, uh, buddy films, you know, sci-fi fantasy, you know, young adult content, you know, superheroes, wh- whatever that flavor is, when it transitions to that, that will determine what Hollywood is putting out. It's not going to be based on whether or not Rings of Power is successful or not, because Rings of Power... Being a series that, as of right now, is supposed to be five seasons, and between season one and two, we're talking a two-year gap here, so we're talking potentially the next 10 years, that cycle's going to move on. That cycle will move on, and, and you know, it, Tolkien stuff may be shelved, you know, for a decade or two, like, like it was from the 1970s until we got Peter Jackson stuff in the early 2000s. But anyway, so that's my counter-argument to that, is that, you know, Don't come at us and say, if you ever want to see more Tolkien stuff on screen, you got to want Rings of Power to succeed, even if you don't like it. Not true. Not true. Rings of Power could be phenomenal number one hit. It will not necessarily guarantee you'll see more Tolkien stuff. That's just a given fact. All right, so let's see. What was the other thing that this person had mentioned? Um, uh, Oh, okay. They they mentioned, and and it's sort of right here um, in the next the next uh, paragraph here. So the Rings of Power is not and will not ruin the Lord of the Rings or any of Tolkien's many other stories. The series could even turn into a massive train wreck, into the massive train wreck that some are already proclaiming it to be, and it still would not taint, destroy, or take away from any of Tolkien's works. That's because, believe it or not, those works will still exist post the Rings of Power. The show is not detracting from Tolkien's writings whatsoever. It is actively building on the text with a new adaptation that, whether you love it or hate it, bears no influence on the quality of material that already exists. The Rings of Power is a fresh supplementary show that serves as a new way for both diehard Tolkien fans and general audiences to engage with the franchise they love. On the face of this, I agree. I I absolutely agree. Listen, Tolkien's books are already written. The the show isn't going to change that. Okay? Um... So I, I'm not exactly sure. So should we not say that the Rings of Power is ruining Tolkien? Um, I, I would agree that it's not ruining Tolkien's work in so far as the work that he's already done. It may be ruining people's experience. People's experience with Tolkien may be getting ruined because the, what the show is putting out is so different from what the books are. 
um, that it's sort of almost like setting you up for failure. I would argue in that sense, it may ruin some people's experience with Tolkien. So, you know, that would be my counter to that is that, you know, you can't just say, well, you can't say that it's ruining, you know, Tolkien. Uh, Again, in a literal sense, the work that the man has already done, his published works and stuff like that, yes, you are correct. The, the Rings of Power show will have no bearing on the books that have already come out. However, it may have bearing on a new generation of people who are looking to be fans or have an interest in Tolkien, and when they realize how different it is from the show, it, it may turn them off. It may ruin their experience to find out that Tolkien, you know, isn't as, you know, doesn't have a, a character like the Galadriel on the show, okay? Doesn't exist in Tolkien's writing, okay? There are strong female characters, yes, but not to the, the way that, not to the extent that the show portrays Galadriel, okay? And that may turn people, some people off. That may ruin their experience with Tolkien. So uh, that one's kind of, eh. You know, I, I could kind of see both sides of that one, but um, let's continue because I think there was one more. Oh, yeah, there, there was one more, which I, I, I found kind of amusing uh, to say that the Rings of Power is ruining the Lord of the Rings is not just disparaging to the immensely talented creatives behind the show, but it's also disrespectful to Tolkien and his works. Tolkien's stories have and will continue to withstand the test of time and no adaptation, no matter how bad, will detract from the world he created in his writings. That is absolutely 100 percent correct. Um, but the person in the video that I'm, I'm sort of responding to, they made, they highlighted the fact that, you know, the people, whether or not you think they, they, the show was horrible or not, the people that worked on it, um, according to this person are, um, talented and creative artists that have put in lots and lots of hours, you know, into, into what they do. And therefore, to to criticize it and, and, and call it garbage is to somehow disparage them and their work and that we should try to avoid, you know, disparaging people's work because it's work. We, we At the very least, we need to respect that it's work. And um, I, I totally disagree with that. Um, as some, again, as a filmmaker, as a visual effects artist, somebody who, who has done this for films, I can tell you, um, no, absolutely not. If you make a crap film... OK, because the writing is 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 lousy, um, because the pacing is lousy, because the plot lines aren't aren't developed well, because the visual effects look like somebody did it in their, you know, somebody's teenage son did it in their basement. And so you are open to all that criticism. As a matter of fact, anytime you do any sort of artistic endeavor, even like this, like this show that I'm doing right now. I am subject to whatever criticisms people watching this have. If they think it's trash and they think it's garbage, they are valid and they are right in in their opinion, okay? Art is subjective, okay? And, and to say that the artist is above critique simply because they've created art is, is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Just because you create art does not mean that you and your art are above criticism. OK, the minute you put something out into the public space, you are open to any criticism, you know, that comes your way and it's valid. OK, if somebody puts something on 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 a, a screen on, on Amazon, OK, and I pay for Amazon and I watch that show and I think it's trash and I go online and say this show is trash. I am perfectly valid and justified and in saying that. And in the rings of power, that's where I stand. So this whole argument that because, you know, there's thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that work on a show and therefore you disparaging the show is somehow disparaging all the work that they put into it. Um, too bad. That's that's what art is all about. You create something. OK, that is wholly unique to you and you put it out there for the public. The public is more than welcome to give their opinion of it and whether or not that hurts you personally and hurts your feelings personally is irrelevant to the equation okay so this argument of don't criticize the creators because they're creators and they created um is is bs okay um you know if if you know there's lots of creators out there that make trash content okay and we're all justified and we're all 
we equally have the right to call it out for what it is. Like I said, people could say that my video is, is trash content, but, you know, that's their opinion. I can't take it personally. You know, if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. And I've had people make comments, you know, my, my intro is too long or whatever and stuff like that. And that's fine. Like I said, I've only asked that we keep it constructive. Okay, if you think something's not right with the show, give me a suggestion. What, how would you like to see it changed? And, you know, I, I might, you know, consider that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you think my show or this other person's show or any YouTube or Amazon or HBO show is trash, you're the one, you're the viewer. You're, you're entitled to that opinion. And it's not disparaging me as the artist if you call it out for that. OK, so I, I don't agree with that person's argument. And I think those were those were the majority of the arguments that this person made. Um, and, and again, I, I can see flaws in all of them um, and, and counterpoints to all of them. And so I just wanted to get them out there because, you know, I, I don't like when I see sort of people that try to tell the fans how they should feel like you guys know who are subscribers to this channel like listen whether you love rings of power or, or fucking hate it you know that that's you you know you're, you're entitled no matter what and if you have a valid point and think i'm wrong on something make your argument make your case don't just throw out a phrase and be like you're stupid you know show me where i'm wrong and that's sort of what i'm trying to do with this video it's like okay you, sir have put out a video making these claims or making these this these cases OK, making the argument for the, this set of, of, of ideas. And I'm just offering the counter again. This should not be interpreted as an attack on any, on any one individual or this person's channel. Um, they're entitled to their opinion, just like everybody else. Um, I don't have to agree with it. But I mean, you know, hey, all I can do is offer the counter argument, which is what this is. If this person wants to, you know, get together with me and maybe we sort of do some, I don't know, maybe uh, like on a Sunday night, we sort of have a debate, you know, like. Tolkien fans and, and different uh, from opposing views, you know, maybe that might be something that might be cool for everybody, you know, it, to show that, you know, even Tolkien fans, we don't necessarily have to agree, but we can at least disagree in a respectful um, and intelligent manner. Anyway, that's what this video was about. Let me know uh, what you think down in the comments below. Do you think as Tolkien fans, we should just, despite hating the show, we should want it to succeed just so we get more Tolkien content? And do you think, other than driving book sales, do you think it will actually drive an increase in Tolkien fandom? Or, you know, do you think more people will see will get interested because of the show, but see how different Tolkien's writing is from the show, and it might actually turn a lot of people off to Tolkien. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Um, if you like the video, give it a like. If you want to hit the notification bell, I would suggest hitting the notification bell. This way you know next time I put out a crappy video. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, I would hopefully... Uh, hope that you would consider giving me your subscription. I think it would be great and it helps the show get out there and get more conversation started and get more views and the whole nine yards. And if you already have subscribed, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are awesome. You are beautiful badasses and I will see you on the next one. Peace.